أغيب وذو اللطائف لا يغيب وأرجوه رجاء لا يخيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيد الأولين والآخرين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to our class, one of our core classes here at Swiss The core classes of course at Swiss are founded on three subjects First is faith, second is practice and the third is purification of the soul Iman, Islam and Tasawwuf The framework for this is provided by a beautiful narration which many of us know from Sayyidina Umar, from Sayyidina Abi, ba- Abi Huraira and others that the Prophet وسلم, was visited by a person who asked him three questions. What is Islam, what is Iman and what is Ihsan? We know the Prophet answered and these are really the three core foundations of Islamic education, right? Islam meaning practice, Iman meaning theology and Ihsan to worship Allah as though you see him even though you can't see him is what we're studying now. Tasawwuf or Tazkiyah to Nafs. If you have any theoretical concerns about studying Tasawwuf or things like that, I encourage you to go and check out my course on Imam Suyuti's Foundations of Orthodox Sufism. And I go through a number of kind of the contemporary concerns that people have. Now, that being said, we want to jump into this because this is our first course in the core series on Tasawwuf. There are other, you know, uh, courses here at Swiss like the Hikam and even uh, Imam Suyuti's text I mentioned earlier, but those are more like electives. We have a series of core courses at Swiss under theology, under practice, and under to soul for to skia to nafs that we want people to follow to go through kind of the Swiss system. And this is the first text uh, in that, and this is of course Al Kharida Al Bahiya of Sayyidina Imam Ahmed Al Dardir radiallahu anhu. Sheikh Ahmed al-Dardir was one of the great, great, great scholars of the later Middle Ages of Islam in Egypt. A tremendous jurist, a tremendous theologian, a tremendous leader, a tremendous uh, scholar of the heart, of the purification of the soul. And I used to actually study in the masjid that was next to his home, which is still there. Of course, you can't go inside it. It's walled off with Sheikh Ahmed Taharayan. Uh, Sheikh Ahmad Dardir, you're going to encounter him again at Swiss. In fact, you're going to encounter this book in some of our discussions on theology because the first part of this book is dedicated to understanding Iman. And the second part is dedicated to, dis- to understanding Ihsan. And we're just going to jump into it, inshallah. And what I want you to think about is now getting the basic practices needed to have a meaningful relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your life and the basic practices needed to preserve and keep your faith strong. So this is like the foundational practices of people who are interested in really doing kind of the labor and getting into the raw materials of working on purifying their soul. Now the Sheikh uh, initially in the beginning parts of this book was talking about Aqidah and as he finishes he says something really important because it's a poem, it's really beautiful. He says, وَيَمْطَوِي فِي كَلِمَةِ الْإِسْلَامِ and he says that the statement La ilaha illallah, every component of Islam falls underneath La ilaha illallah. Because he's talking about theology earlier, which is really is encapsulated by the statement La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. So after talking about Tawheed, after talking about the prophets, after talking about the angels, after talking about the hereafter. After talking about Qadda and Qadr, he says, addressing the importance of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, he says, وَيَنْطَوِي أَيَّنْدَرِجْ فِي كَلِمَةِ الْإِسْلَامِ The kalima of Islam is La ilaha illallah. So everything that he's addressed now is going to be umbrellaed, if you will, by La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. مَا قَدْ مَضَى مِنْ سَائِرِ الْأَحْكَامِ All the things that I talked about, this, 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 this ruling, this ruling, that ruling, you have to believe this about Allah. You have to believe this about the prophets. You have to believe this about the angels. All of this يَنْدَرِجْ أَوْ يَنْطَوِي فِي كَلِمَةِ الْإِسْلَامِ 
is encapsulated in the statement La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. And that moves us now to the section on Tasawwuf where he says very beautifully فَأَكْثِرًا مِنْ ذِكْرِهَا بِالْأَدَبِ تَرْقَى بِهَذَا ذِكْرِ أَعْلَى الرُّتَبِ He says, MashaAllah, فَأَكْثِرًا مِنْ ذِكْرِهَا أَيْ مِنْ ذِكْرِ كَرِمَةِ الْإِسْلَامِ So therefore, abundantly and generously say, La ilaha illallah. Engage in the dhikr of saying, La ilaha illallah. Bil adab, with the proper etiquettes. تَرْقَى بِهَذَا ذِكْرِ أَعْلَى الرُّتَبِ Because you will ascend to the highest stations, the highest spiritual states, the highest levels of Iman and commitment to Allah by saying La ilaha illallah abundantly. So this is the first etiquette of the believer who is starting now to work on the heart. Where should we start? Let's start with dhikr. Let's start with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Imam al-Bukhari in his Sahih, it starts with Inna ma'amalu bi niyat. Every action is by the intention. And then he ends this incredible collection of prophetic narrations. Karimatan khafifatan ala lisan thaqilatan fil mizan habibatan inda rahman. Right? He says that there are two statements, the hadith, that are light on the tongue heavy on the scales and beloved to Allah. That's the last hadith in Sahih Bukhari. As if to say that everything in between is going to be really predicated by the niyyah and the remembrance of Allah. Another lesson that I heard is that maybe someone reading Sahih al-Bukhari is like, man, this is a lot to do. I can't do all this as that man who came to Sayyidina Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, Inna shara'i al-Islami qad kathurat. He said, you know, the, 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 the rules and everything now become so abundant in Islam. And this was someone who became Muslim early on when there wasn't that many things to do. Now you have salah, zakah, hajj, jihad, da'wah, everything, right? So he's saying, qad kathurat, it's a lot. Is there anything you can teach me that I can do that's going to like help me maintain? Even though I'm not able to do all those things. And the Prophet ﷺ said to him, keep your tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is something that any of us can do, no matter where we are. No matter where we are spiritually, no matter how bad you feel about yourself, no matter how successful you feel. How does the end of the Prophet's prophethood uh, uh, come about? فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ With dhikr. How does the Prophet's prophethood start? اِقْرَأْ بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ Read with the name of your Lord. So nubuwa is sandwiched between the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whether someone's just starting out, whether someone is a saintly person, whether someone is struggling with sin, this is the first step to pull us out of those difficult times into a meaning relation, meaningful relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَأَكْثِرًا مِنْ ذِكْرِهَا بِالْأَدَبِ تَرْقَى بِهَذَا الذِّكْرِ أَعْلَى الرُّتَبِ Allahu Akbar. So abundantly say, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ With adab, we're going to talk about that next time, you will, you will ascend to the highest stations. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, أَفْتَرُوا The best thing that was said, by in by myself, after ma qultu, after ma qultu, ana wan. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, after ma qultu, ana wan nabiyuna min qabli la ilaha illallah. The best thing that I said and the prophets before me said was la ilaha illallah, that there is nothing in existence worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa taala. No cause, no car, no job. No family member, no attachment to sin. La ilaha illallah. So alhamdulillah, the first etiquette that we learned for those of us who are seeking to have this connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to abundantly say la ilaha illallah. Next time we're going to talk about the etiquettes associated with this beautiful statement. Barakallahu feekum wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barakallahu sayyidina Muhammad wa sallam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.